Hi everyone. In today's lesson, we'll be taking a look at the transformed sine function. So in your notebook, please put down today's subtitle, transformed sine function. The transformed sine function has the following format. y equals to a sine of b multiplied by x minus h, and of course plus k. The transformed sine function has a lot of elements packed into it. So let's go over each element slowly. Let's begin with the easiest element to identify, which is where the cycle starts. The start point of the cycle in a sine function is revealed by the h and k together. The next easiest element to identify is the amplitude. Just a reminder that the definition of an amplitude is the half distance from the highest to the lowest points on the graph. And that can be calculated simply by taking the absolute value of the a variable. The next element of the sine function that we can easily identify is its period. Just a reminder that the period of a sine function is defined as the length of one cycle. And that can be calculated with the formula 2 pi divided by the absolute value of b. The next element that we can identify from the transform sine function is its variation. If we determine that the value from the product of a and b is positive, then it means that the cycle will start with a hump and end with a dip. If, however, we determine that the product of a and b is negative, then it means that the cycle will begin with a dip and end with a hump. The final element that we can identify from the transform sine function, which can help us draw a very decent curve, is the maximum and the minimum values of the graph. The maximum can be calculated with the formula k plus the amplitude, and the minimum value of the graph can be calculated with the formula k subtract the amplitude. With all these clues in our hands, we are ready to try and draw a transform sine function. So for our example, please put the following down. I'd like to draw the graph belonging to the function y equals negative 3 times the sine of half times x minus pi plus 13. First, let's clearly identify our variables. The value of a is equal to negative 3. The value of b is equal to half. The value of h is equal to pi. And the value of k is equal to 13. First, let's identify the start of our cycle. That is given by the coordinate h and k. And in this example, our cycle will begin at the coordinate pi and 13. Next, let's identify the amplitude. The amplitude is given by the absolute value of a. So in this example, it will equal to the absolute value of negative 3, which is equal to 3. Next, let's identify the period. The period is given by the calculation 2 pi divided by the absolute value of b. So in our example, it will equal to 2 pi divided by the absolute value of half, which gives us a period of 4 pi. That means our cycle will be 4 pi radians long. Next, let's identify the variation for our cycle. The variation is given by the product of a and b. In this case, since the product of our a and b turns out to be negative, that means that our cycle will begin with a hole and then end with a hump. Next, let's determine the maximum value for this graph. The maximum value is determined with the calculation k plus the amplitude. So in this example, it will equal to 13 plus our amplitude of 3, which will give 16. And finally, 
Let's determine the minimum value for this graph. The minimum is calculated by doing k subtract the amplitude. So in our example, it will be calculated as 13 subtract 3, which gives us 10. So y equals 10 will be the lowest point of our graph. With all these clues in hand, we are now ready to draw the graph. In order to accommodate all these clues, we will need a graph about this size. Now before you pause the video and prepare your grid, let me discuss efficient ways of determining how to calibrate the y-axis and especially how to calibrate the x-axis. Let's first discuss the y-axis. The y-axis is very easy to calibrate because we already know the maximum and the minimum values for this graph. In our example, the maximum is at 16 and the minimum is at 10, which means that the graph will not go above 16 and will not drop below 10. So this helps us confine the y-axis for our graph to between the maximum and the minimum. Calibrating the x-axis is a little bit trickier, but I feel that the easiest way to calibrate the x-axis is to simply do the following. Start the x-axis at the variable h and simply jump by h. Next, now that we're ready to draw, let's discuss efficient ways to draw this graph. Perhaps one of the most efficient ways is to simply prepare a box in which our cycle will be located. To draw the box is very easy. The box will begin at x equals h, because remember that's where the cycle starts, and the length of the cycle determines the end of the box, which is located at x equals h plus the period. The height of the box is easy to determine also. Keep in mind that the maximum value for the cycle is at 16 and the minimum value of the cycle is at 10. So, therefore, it makes that the height of the box is equal to 6, which is essentially given by the calculation amplitude times 2. Keeping in mind that the sine function is a symmetric wave, this can help us further subdivide the box. Subdividing the interior of the box in half vertically and in half horizontally will help us with the symmetry of the graph. With all this preparation, we are finally ready to draw this graph. Let's put down a few points in order to guide us. From our start point of the cycle, we knew that that occurred at pi and 13, which means that the end point of the cycle will occur at 5 pi and 13, and the middle of the cycle will occur at 3 pi and 13. We also know that the minimum for this graph occurs at y equals 10, and thanks to the variation, it will start with a hole or a dip. That will make a coordinate appear at 2 pi and 10. And we also knew that the maximum occurred at the value y equals 16. And because we knew from the variation that it was going to end with a hump, then the high point will occur at the coordinate 4 pi and 16. And if you can imagine how these coordinates are connected with a nice graceful wave, your curve could look something like this. And that's all there is, ladies and gentlemen, to dealing with a transformed sine function.